Yes, it's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, showbiz, sport, business and beyond. Tonight, Winston Peters, the leader of the New Zealand First political party since its foundation in 1993. Peter served as the 13th Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand from 96 to 98 and from 2017 to 2020. He also served as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Treasurer of New Zealand in what has been a long and illustrious political career. In spite of New Zealand's strict COVID regulations, Winston Peters went against the grain and supported the convoy 2022 New Zealand protest outside Parliament, calling for an end to vaccine mandates. In the summer of 2016, Peters also backed Brexit and told the New Zealand Parliament that he hoped Britain will show its independence from an ungrateful European parliamentary yoke and come back to the Commonwealth. I'm delighted to say that Winston Peters joins me now. Uh, good evening, Mr. Peters. Good evening. A privilege to have you on the programme. First of all, can I ask you how things are in New Zealand? Uh, is the country recovering from its sort of post-pandemic trauma? No, it's not. Uh, we are facing, like many countries, a cost of living crisis. But the problem is a lot of it is home born or brought about by a failure of governmental action. And that goes into energy as well. And then power, which has been an advantage to us, electricity has been an advantage to us. These things are all problematic at the moment. Mm. And so we're in a malaise, so to speak, with a year to go for the next election. And how do you see that election playing out? Well, that's very interesting. <laughs> but like the preview I've heard to this program, uh, it's sort of the case of, well, it's our turn now on one side. And some people are saying, well, I couldn't do worse than the last crowd. And neither of those options really are what New Zealand or any other country is looking for. Countries are looking for a much more superior, permanent, sustainable government that will last. And we've had too many transient ideas that simply don't work in our country of late. Uh, tell me about working with Jacinda Ardern. No doubt she does have her gifts, but you've clashed with her on more than one occasion. Well, when you campaign, like the 2020 election, uh, and all around the Western world, and we're a democracy uh, where we know that there's a thing called a manifesto, as highfalutin as it might sound. It includes campaign promises because you're seeking consent from the people and a mandate to go forward on the basis of what you said. Jacinda Ardern and the Labour Party is doing so much now that was never part of the last campaign, never mandated, never part of their manifesto. And the consequence for that is that they're in steep trouble in terms of the polls. Now, the polls here are not as sound as they are in some countries, but the signs are all there that uh, they're in deep, deep trouble. The question is, will the alternative do much better, which is what this country desperately needs? Uh, what has been your appraisal of New Zealand's response to the pandemic, which, like Australia, was far stricter than in European countries like the UK? Well, we started out uh, in early 2020 having no idea what we were facing. But when we did, then we made some serious mistakes. Far too slow with the vaccine. The second thing that must concern people, despite the absolutist arguments, is that when people are given medicine, they're entitled to be told the potential downside. And that didn't happen. It was by way of an old met, uh, ultimatum. Take this or you can't go to work. Take this or you can't be employed or you must uh, do the following things. Now, that sort of tyrannical dictatorship is not justified either in modern medicine and certainly not in a modern democracy. And that's where Labour went wrong as well. Uh, yes, and of course, you uh, challenged uh, those vaccine mandates and you supported those protesting. Uh, did you pay a political price for your intervention? Well, dare I say, at the equivalent of your industry, the media, the mainstream media in New Zealand all attacked me. But it, and I was also trespassed off Parliament by the Speaker. Uh, and so to cut a long story short, we nevertheless ignored that. I took the Speaker to the High Court and won a major case here because he was judged by the court to have acted unreasonably and irrationally. And then he had also prescribed, uh, prescribed or prescribed 
my fundamental you know, rights as a, you know, a person or any New Zealander in my country. So it was a major case. And in the end, that's what matters, the fact that there's a standard or precedent that he couldn't bypass because I went to speak to those protesters because not one parliamentarian from any party in parliament was prepared to hear them out. It doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong, but peaceful protest is a critical part of the democracy we are and the one that we inherited from your, your country as well. Now, I don't know if this is an unfair characterization, but many see Jacinda Ardern as irredeemably woke and a tyrant. I've looked at her actions in the course of the pandemic and I've dubbed her the Kiwi Mussolini. Um, here's a video of her, uh, Winston, uh, essentially explaining that the government is the only place where you can get the facts. Take a listen to this. For that information, do feel free to visit at any time to clarify any rumour you may hear, covid19.govt.nz. Otherwise, dismiss anything else. We will continue to be your single source of truth. We will provide information frequently. The government is your source of truth. Anything else you should ignore. Uh, that sounds like straight out of George Orwell's 1984, Winston. Well, sadly, it is. But here's the real issue. The media in this country should have seen that for what it was. It is tyrannical talk. It might be masked in a pleasant face and nice dress and a haircut. Wouldn't matter if it was a male or female, but that is tyrannical talk. It's the very seeds of, uh, how shall I say it, uh, tyranny. And uh, people, though, today are seeing things with great clarity. And that's why the so-called gloss has very truly come off now. Uh, do you think that she'll be out at the next election? I don't think it. I know it. Mm. Um, can I ask you about where New Zealand is now? You mentioned the cost well, of living crisis. Go, that, go for the it. Only reason why she became, the only reason why she became the Prime Minister was because in our negotiations, and we sought a certain economic and social plan, and it was signed up, we agreed to it, and they simply couldn't keep that agreement. It became very, very clear at the end that having shaken one's hand, they weren't keeping their word. And in the end, the ramifications for that will be huge coming into the 2023 election. Uh, Winston, uh, an interesting point. Uh, why did you back Brexit all those years ago? Well, I'll tell you the truth. It's because there are about... 2.3 billion people out there in a thing called the Commonwealth. We have never done much with the Commonwealth in recent times at all. And it's sad because at the time I was in the UK in uh, 2016, the Commonwealth was growing at about 5.5% across the whole Commonwealth. Our trade relations were sparse and scarce in the extreme, and I could see a chance if there was the right leadership and the right sense of immediacy to make a change. And then I saw out of the EU something quite sad because I am one of those people that saw the great stability uh, of Europe post the war as having a lot to do with NATO, having a lot to do with the EU. But when you've got a bureaucracy utterly out of control with contempt for domestic parliaments, then there was an enduring future coming and it didn't mean that it would last. That's why, uh, unlike most of us from around the world who backed Remain, I thought that Britain was going to go and I believed it would go. And the reason why it would go was, for the first time, the ordinary person, usually a Labour voter, was going to get a voice and they weren't going to waste it. A deep privilege to have you on the programme. I wish you well all the way live from New Zealand, the former Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, Winston Peters. A fascinating conversation. Your reaction, mark at gbnews.uk.